All right, so if you didn't know, uh, hill climbs in the UK are a pretty big thing. There's like basically hill climbs every single weekend. Starts, I mean, the actual season starts in about September, but some people start a bit earlier. And they're every single weekend. They're very short, they're very sharp, they're very steep normally. And um, obviously the effort is quite different to sort of any other effort you do in cycling. For instance, like a time trial, you know, the shortest you can do in the UK normally is five miles, but the average is 10 to 25, which is what, 16 to 40 kilometers. So, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, for 20 minutes to an hour maybe. And then road races are a lot longer. They might have punchy short efforts in them, but the whole duration is a lot longer. So the only real comparison in cycling is track cycling. Um, and obviously the team pursuit, the individual pursuit is a very similar effort. Obviously the speed is different. However, the actual time and duration, so therefore the power is very similar. So we're going to look at, the nationals because that's really where I'm on a peak as always um, and try and get a good result. Now the definition of a good result I'm not going to quantify because I don't really know how I am going. It's been a good year training and then corona hit and then it hasn't been good. But anyway like obviously my goal coming into this was trying to get maybe top 30, top 40 which you might be like oh that's not that good but people in the UK are quite good at hill climbing. Like top 30 I probably need to do maybe a wasp per kilo for three minutes maybe more maybe eight and a half it's something stupid so anyway uh we're gonna look at the segment so this is a segment uh 15 for 900 meters so actually a good one for me uh very steep as a lighter rider and obviously everyone in hill climbs is relatively light but like you know some people who do it as like close to 70 some people are close to 50 i'm like 58 59 probably in hill climbs um so you know it does help when it's a little bit less, a little bit light, a little bit shallower, sorry, steeper gradient because then um, it's more watts per kilo. So anyway, the com is obviously Andrew Feather, 530 watts, 3 minutes 16. So that's the sort of effort it's going to be like 3 to 4 minutes, you think, maybe, yeah, so around that. And you think, okay, well, what's a similar duration? So you think team pursuiting. So if, in an ideal world, now obviously most people who do hill climbs actually enjoy it because you don't need lots of volume. But the question is, if you were a full-time professional, got paid a million pounds a, like a year, do hill climbs, how do you train? And I was thinking about this and I was like, I have actually a fair amount of time. Um, I'm off university um, and basically I'm just doing YouTube. So I've got a fair amount of time uh, to train. So I was like, how should I train? So I was doing some research, thinking about team pursuiting and I found a, quite an interesting article. Okay, it's a bit out of date, it's for 2002. But this is about how the German team pursuit squad um, trained. I think there's some things that I'm going to take from it and some things that we're not going to take from it as much. Um, so this is all just preamble about how hard it is. So they need about 520 watts um, for it. I mean, it's quite funny. They only rode four minutes for a team pursuit, um, which obviously now is basically what the individual pursuit record is. Um, then they just go through how they're going to quantify their fitness. These, these are all the numbers basically calculating how much um, and power you need um, all about drag and all the rest of it. Uh, then we've got some numbers here, which is interesting to see about that lactate threshold. So you can see they're not actually that crazy. This guy weighs 82 kilos, his threshold's 400-ish or a bit more, with 5.1, so not that crazy. Um, and then you can see their, their 4K individual team uh, time and what power they did, so he did 551. Um, and you can also see that some of the smaller riders, like this guy's threshold is not that good at all, but anyway, I don't really, un maybe maybe it might be not actually be what their threshold is. It could be something a little bit different. Um, and then you can also see here about like, so man one does about 670 and then positions three and four is like 450. Um, but the, ma the main thing to think about really is not the team pursuit, but is how they train. So this, uh, this part is all about their training. And I think it's pretty interesting to see. So number one, I think they now do a lot more track training than they did back in the day. Um, so that's one thing to take from it. Um, but generally, the same principles apply. So these are 19 days prior to the Olympics. So like basically, they've finished a stage race, they had a four day stage race about 19 days out, which is quite crazy. You think about that. that's, that's a big training block. Then they just did like basically four hours easy training, um, which is this um, rest day. And then they did start doing some train track training really quite close to the, to the race, but not very high duration. But if we look at sort of like the the whole cycle um and obviously this is only one year in a four-year process but you can see that basically base training which is a what they call basic training takes place in march then they do a stage race then they do a bit of track stage race bit of track stage race um and i think the key point is and they go through it now um so they're basically just 
me this is all about measuring um, their threshold, etc. Um, but the training was based on the following concepts, establishing a high aerobic performance with a total training volume of about 35,000 kilometers a year. So this is the point is that they use road racing to get a really high aerobic fitness, which you might think is not relevant for a three to four minute effort. However, it is because most of the time you are going to be aerobic. Um, you know, it's an anaerobic effort, but you're still going to need a high, like the more basically you can max out the aerobic capacity, the better you're going to be. And also by doing mass amounts of base training, when you start to do the high intensity, the adaptions come a lot quicker. Um, which is good. So basically they say here 56% of VO2 max and they do three to eight hours. So that's basically what they do. They just go easy most of the time, uh, which is interesting. And then they say 94% of training was below the anaerobic threshold, 4% around the lactate threshold and 2% above the lactate threshold, um, which again just goes to show most of their training is really easy. Um, they do do some threshold. They do do some um, super threshold as well. Um, and then pre-competition training, uh, in addition to mostly low intensity, high mileage training during the period, um, preceding the stage races, they do a bit of track as well. So you can basically see they don't actually do too many efforts in training. Most of the time they just do easy miles and then do uh, stage races effectively, um, which would be an interesting way to train for hill climbs as well if you were going to do stage racing. Which, and I th actually think doing road racing is a really good way of getting the punchy efforts in without doing them, which is why I actually think doing road racing, having two weeks off and then starting hill climb season can be really, really good. Um, for me, I'm not road racing this year. There's quite a lot of reasons why, but the main thing is I, I can't really crash at the moment. Um, and then they start to talk about the track specific training, which I think isn't really that important for hill climbers because like obviously you're just going to do your own hill climb training. Um, and then they say basic training is like 50% of VO2 max, um, which VO2 max is obviously higher than thresholds. That probably works out to be about 60% off threshold-ish. Um, and then they did. They talk about their lactate t testing, et cetera, et cetera, the warm-up program, and then the competition data as well. Um, but I, yeah, look at these positions. They are horrendous. Um, but the conclusion really is this, is that it requires a high aerobic and anaerobic skills. Um, and then that's basically the key thing. So then we've, we've seen obviously what you need to be able to do to be a world-class team pursuiter, which is you need to ride a lot. So then you think if you're actually going to do hill climbs, the same principles apply. The same principles that actually doing a massive base program is not lost. So like this summer, that's what I've been trying to do. Obviously, it wasn't ideal when I got Corona. But apart from that, like I've actually managed to get a decent amount of Ks through. Like if we go on the old training peaks, obviously, if you want to follow me on Strava, link is below and it has all my training. But like I did some big weeks. So you can see here, this is June. I had exams at the moment. It really wasn't ideal. Um, but then like I went bike packing, which was really good. I did a 31 hour week this week, a lot of zone one. Um, then I did a threshold test and then I had a sort of easier week. And then this week as well, um, I did 21 hours in like five days, which was quite good. Um, and now I've come back. I'm, I was on holiday for a bit and now I've come back. I'm getting in some more, more hours. Um, and that's basically the plan. The plan is, is that we want to do a lot of hours this summer. It hasn't really worked out as well as we wanted to um, due to a couple of reasons, as I mentioned. Uh, but that is the plan, basically. And even now, I think normally I don't do as much volume as I do generally when I'm doing hill climbs because you want to hit the real high intensity. But I think what I've learned is actually I can tolerate a decent amount of volume. And as long as you keep it quite easy, like zone one, two border instead of like zone two, zone three border. So maybe only riding 170 watts for me instead of 220 that means that actually you get most of the adaptions. Like zone one does get adaptions. People say it doesn't, but it does. Um, and that also allows you then to recover and then you can do it. So we got my first hill climb on September the 4th. We're going to see how that is. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. And the other thing that I'm taking into consideration this year is I listened to a podcast with Steven Seiler and also the coach of the Norwegian track team, uh, like speed skating team. And he was saying every time he does a race, he gets his athletes to do efforts afterwards because he's sort of like, well, it's a sort of a classic um, analogy is that when you do anaerobic, like you turn your body's like anaerobic thing on, once you have it on, you might as well max that day out as much as possible. So if you're going to do a race, like three minutes full gas is really hard, obviously. But if you can just do some 40 20s afterwards, which I think mentally aren't too hard because they, you know, you can just go hard for 40 seconds to cruise for a bit. If you can do that afterwards, that can be really useful. And it's the same with my other intervals. Like if I do my main hill climb intervals afterwards and then just whack at the 40 20s, I feel like that should really help. Um, but yeah, this this time obviously I haven't planned all the way to to hill to nationals, but the plan is basically to actually keep the volume a bit higher 
um, than usual and really focus basically on my threshold for a little bit and then start to pepper in some sprints, like some 20, 30 second sprints um, and then some classic hill climb intervals. So you can see I'm going to start doing just sort of going lower and lower in terms of the time. So start with some six minute, eight minutes with some 40, 20s and stuff and then end up with like minute and a half max efforts um, to build up to win it, which is going to be a tasty three minute effort. Um, but anyway, I'm going to talk about my hill climb bike and everything else in a separate video um, and because that is an important part of hill climbs because there's no UCI weight limit and you want your, if your bike's not under six kilos, you're at a disadvantage, that's for sure. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy and we'll see you in the next one.